Today, we're going to use our UV random transform node to break up texture tiling. Let's go. So one of the big problems that we deal with when creating materials is texture tiling. Anytime we have a large object that needs to be seen from close up and far away, we need to repeat our texture maps multiple times in order to have enough texture resolution close up and cover the whole object. But repeating the texture over and over again looks really unnatural. Terrain is a good example where this problem becomes really obvious. One solution is to make our texture maps bigger so they tile less, but that just takes up a lot of texture memory and we still have tiling, it's just bigger tiling. So we need to come up with a more creative solution. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use our UV random transform node uh, to break up texture tiling. We'll go from looking like this, where you can see the texture tiling repetition a lot, uh, to looking like this, where our tiling repetition is completely gone. This UV random transform node is the core of our technique. Uh, we created this node in the previous two videos. If you haven't worked through those yet, you won't know how to make this. So be sure to go back and watch those and make your own UV random transform node. I'll link those videos down into the description. Okay, let's go back to the point where we left off last week. Okay, so last week I showed you how we can use our uh, UV random transform node to apply a random scale rotation uh, and offset to our UVs. Um, so we do that using this random seed input. So any value that I put into uh, the random seed will give us a set of random transforms, offsets, rotations, and scales. So I'm using the value of 72 right now, but I can give it any value really. If I give it a value of one, I get a new set of random offset, rotation, and scale, value of two. So any value that I pass into here, I'm gonna get different random offsets, rotations, and scales. And the thing that we did right at the end of last week's video is I showed you that we can use a texture like this uh, that just has a bunch of random noise in it. Let's take a look at what the blue channel of this texture looks like. So you can see it just has um, some patchy black spots and some patchy white spots. And I made this texture in Photoshop by using the render clouds feature in the filters. And then I just use the levels adjustment to uh, to adjust it so that the, the spots are a little bit more solid. And so what we can do is take this node here and pass it into our random seed so that we're generating uh, random transforms for the white areas and the black areas. And one thing that I showed you is it doesn't work very well if you have gradients in your texture. Uh, like we are looking at here, uh, I have these areas where it fades from white to black. And each of those different grayscale values is going to be generating a different uh, random transform uh, for our UVs. And that's why we see like all this noisiness here, because like every single pixel is getting a different random value. And so the way that we fix that is by adding this round node here, which either rounds up to black, uh, up to white or down to black. And so every pixel is either exactly black or exactly white. So we get one random transform for the white areas and another random transform for the black areas. So if I plug this into our random seed and then plug our texture back into base color, now you can see uh, where the black areas are happening, the random transform is untransformed. And so here in these black areas, you can see that I have uh, just the straight up texture map without any randomness applied. And then where the white areas are in that mask, I'm getting these random transforms where I've, I've rotated it slightly, offset it slightly, and then scaled it slightly as well. So this is the beginning of the technique that we can use for breaking up our tiling. So let's actually introduce some texture tiling artifacts here just so that we can see how this technique is working. 
So I'm going to add a multiply here for our texture coordinate node. And let's multiply it by like seven, uh, just so we can get seven repetitions of our texture uh, across the surface. So if we just look at it like this, you can see that I'm tiling my texture seven times. And especially with this grid texture, the texture tiling is really obvious. Um, we don't want uh, such repetitive texture tiling. And so we're going to be applying this technique to break that up. So if I apply our MF UV transforms to our, our UVs, and then I plug that into our texture sample, you can see that I've broken that up somewhat. Uh, in the areas where it's black, where my uh, mask is black here, I'm not getting any transforms, but where it's white, uh, you can see that I have this, this alternate transform that's like rotated uh, diagonally. This works fairly well, um, but one issue that I see here is I can still see some texture tiling because, you know, for example, I have this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile. So it's still kind of repetitive on this axis and also on this axis. I'm not quite breaking it up enough. Right now, I only have two different uh, zones of random, uh, random transforms. And so what I need to do is find a way of creating uh, more areas of differentiation. So this texture that I'm using here, this mask, is mostly just black and white. And it's giving me two nice zones of random transforms. But what I really need is uh, to create a bunch more zones. And in order to do that, I need to use a texture uh, that has more gradients between black and white. And so I'm going to go to uh, my textures here. And I have a texture that's called uh, Distortion that I've used in past videos. Let me show you what this texture actually looks like. So I created this texture in Photoshop again just by using the Render Noise filter. And you can see that in each of the channels, red, green, and blue, it's just a set of um, random noise. And I can link this texture down in the description if you want uh, to use mine. Um, but you're also welcome to just make your own. It's fairly straightforward to, to just use the Render Clouds feature in Photoshop. But the interesting thing about this, this um, texture is that it has these nice smooth gradients that go from white to black. And each channel has a slightly different gradient. I'm not going to use all three. I just need one of them, but at least I have uh, the option to choose uh, which of these three channels I want. So we're going to bring this texture sample in again, and uh, we're going to be using the blue channel here, and I'm going to pass that into my round, and then we'll take a look at what that looks like. And you can see now, because we used round, we're back to our same, the same thing that we had before, where we have two zones, one black and one white. And what I really want is to have multiple zones. So how can I do that? Well, I actually have 256 different zones here. It's practically a different uh, UV transform zone for every pixel. And I, I want to kind of step that down and not make quite so many. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to add a multiply node here and I'm going to multiply it by the number of zones that I want. So let's say that I want uh, five different random UV transform zones. So I'm just going to multiply by five. And then I'm going to pass that back into my round node. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the range of my texture, which is currently in the zero to one range. And by multiplying it by five, now my range is from zero to five. And then by rounding it, I now have values at zero, at one, at two, at three, at four, and also at five. And so I guess I have uh, a total of six different zones. Now you can't see this very well if I pass it into base color because the, the, the values go well above one. 
But if we want to visualize it, I can add a multiply in here and just multiply this by 0 0.2. And then we'll pass that in. So this is just going to give you an idea. It'll show you what our different transform zones look like. Now, I don't actually need to use this uh, multiply by 0.2 because it's enough that I have my five transform nodes because my random seed value here is able to take values above zero to one. Uh, and so I can just pass in my value that's between zero and five here. So let's pass this into our random seed value and then plug our texture back in. And now you can see that uh, I've got a whole bunch of different random zones here. Uh, and I can use this multiply value here to determine how many different zones I want. So if I, I just multiply it by one, I've gone back to just having two zones. But if I multiply by two, now I have three. And I can just continue increasing this until I get, um, until I get a result that I'm happy with. So this is pretty cool that the higher I go with this multiplier, uh, the more uh, random transform zones that I'm going to get and the more broken up uh, my textures are going to be. So this looks pretty nice. But one thing that I will say is the number of random zones that you use will depend quite a bit on the content of your texture. So instead of using this texture sample, Let's switch over from our UV grid here to um, maybe something that's a little bit more representative that you might use on terrain. So at the beginning of the video, we were taking a look at our cobblestones texture. So let's pick that one. And here you can see that we've broken up our cobblestones quite a bit. Now, if we have too many transform zones, like for example, if I, if I type in something like 15, you can see that um, I, I start getting so many different UV transforms that it really uh, starts breaking up individual cobblestones in my texture. So I want to increase this value. I want to start out at uh, I want to start out at one and just increase this value to the point where I stop seeing so much repetition and not go too far beyond that. Because if I slice this up too many times, uh, you're not even gonna be able to make out individual cobblestones anymore. <laughs> and so that won't be any good either. So I guess for this particular texture, uh, seven different UV transform zones seems to be uh, a pretty good value. Um, you can see that I've removed all of that texture tiling that I had before. If we go back to just using our straight up UVs, you can see that it's a very normalized grid of repeated textures. Um, but if I pass in my UV random transforms um, with multiple uh, transform zones, I've done a really good job of breaking up that uh, texture repetition. So let's switch over to Unity and I'll show you how to do the same thing in that engine. Okay, here we are in Unity, and you can see that I have a very similar graph setup as I had in Unreal. I have my UV coordinates, and I'm passing them into my multiply node and multiplying my UVs by seven, just to get my textures tiling seven times. And if I pass this value into uh, my texture here, you can see that now my texture is tiling seven times across and seven times down. Then I'm passing those uh, UV values into my UV random transform node. Um, this is the subgraph that we created in the last two weeks. And you can also see that I'm using that same uh, noise texture and multiplying it by seven to get the, um, the different random transform zones. Then I'm ra rounding those values to the nearest, uh, to the nearest whole number and then passing those random transform zones into my random seed value of my UV random transform node. Then once my UVs have been randomly transformed, I pass those new UVs into uh, my texture sampler node and I get the scrambling effect that my UV random transform node creates uh, to break up the texture tiling. Now, obviously we're using the grid here um, but if we switch over to 
our cobblestones texture, you can see that I'm getting the same results here in Unity that I was getting in Unreal. Our UV tiling effect is completely broken up. So if I wire my UVs back in, you can see that it's tiled a ton. And if I wire my random transform UVs in, now you can see that the tiling is nicely broken up. Now, this is a pretty cool effect. It does a great job of breaking up tiling, but there is uh, one significant drawback. I don't know if you can see if I zoom in here. The drawback is that the edges, uh, wherever it switches from one random transform zone to another, there are these really hard edges. I can't zoom in quite enough. I don't know, maybe if I reduce the, the number of uh, tiles here, it'll be a little bit more obvious. There are these really hard cutoff lines between uh, the different transform zones. And so it looks especially weird where it hacks right into uh, uh, one, of the, one of the detail features in the texture where cobblestones overlap each other and that sort of thing. So if I want to make this technique better, I need to find a way of mm, softening these edges and being able to blend between the different transform zones instead of just jumping right from one zone to the other. And that brings us to the topic that we're going to discuss in next week's video. Uh, let me show you just a sneak peek of what we're going to be talking about next week. So what we have here is a hexagonal grid. And you can see that I've generated this grid with red, green, and blue hexagonal tiles. And if we zoom in here, you can see that each tile smoothly, smoothly blends into its neighbors. And so we're gonna be using this hexagonal tiling grid uh, to blend between our different uh, random transform zones. So next week, we're going to be creating, we're going to start the process of creating this grid. And then we're going to use this grid to blend between all our various random transforms. And the result is going to be something that looks like this, where each individual hexagonal tile has its own random transforms applied and then each tile blends smoothly into the tile next to it. And so we get rid of our tiling artifacts, but we also blend smoothly between our random transforms. And so we end up with something that's much nicer uh, and doesn't have those hard cutoff lines uh, of our other effects. So that's what we're gonna be talking about next week. So be sure to come back for that. Well, thanks for watching everybody and have a great week and come back next week to learn about hex grid tiling. <laughs>